watching Over the Edge from Event Horizon with John Michael Godier. And we're back with Dr. Paul Matt Sutter talking about the universe. Paul, all right, so let's go back historically in a sort of a two pronged approach. The the beginning of the universe is mysterious, mainly because of inflation. But let's go back to the singularity. You can say that the universe, as we were talking about, the universe, it's irrelevant to ask any questions about what's outside the universe. Is it equally irrelevant to ask what happened before the Big Bang, if anything? Yeah, that is a good question. And unlike with the edge of the universe, I can't yet say i can't tell you with any confidence if that question makes no sense or not we simply don't know for the edge of the universe we have a very simple very straightforward mathematical description of that and so we know what's going on so i can just point to the math and say yeah 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 the math holds up to experiment so and the math says this therefore that's the way it is but with the very early universe we talked about inflation, how exotic that event is, and how we really have a very poor understanding of the physics. If you push things even earlier, going back to less than, say, 10 to the minus 35 seconds or less than 10 to the minus 40 seconds, the universe is in such an extreme state that it can only be described by a unified theory of gravity and the other forces, because that is what's happening in the universe. That is the only description available of that epoch. And we don't have a successful theory of unified gravity and the other forces. So we can't say what happens in those earliest moments. And then you push start push back even further and then you start to seriously wonder if our conceptions of space and time that we rely on break down. Maybe those don't even make sense. Maybe the concept of the passage of time doesn't make sense at the very smallest scales. Or maybe it does, or maybe it doesn't. We honestly don't know. There could be something, there very well could be something before the event that we call the Big Bang, which is just our name for the very earliest history of the universe. Or not. Or maybe the word before doesn't even make sense. Or it doesn't matter because you could never know what, what Or began. it doesn't matter because if, if there is no observational consequences, then it also doesn't matter. So once again, it becomes ambiguous as not a part of our universe, therefore an unknowable question you could you cannot an ever answer that question now um in in regards to general relativity like we we're talking about and the big bang so during inflation what did mm -hmm. what does general relativity actually hold i mean does it make sense during that period yes even in these extreme moments of inflation General relativity, general relativity still holds. And in fact, general relativity is the base of how we start to describe and understand inflation. General relativity in cosmological scenarios, in fact, in all scenarios, gives us a connection between the structure of space-time, its geometry, how it's bent and flexed, in its contents, what kind of stuff is in there and what is it doing? And it's this simple formula, actually complex equations, but simple formula applied to the whole entire universe that tells us how we can connect the contents of the universe, the ingredients of the universe to its history. See, that creates a question. So Einstein, when he formulated that, didn't really even know that the universe was expanding, right? Um, he had no, that, that's pre-Edwin Hubble, correct? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And this is one of those strange quirks in history where Einstein developed general relativity, 
had applied it to the solar system, learned a lot about Mercury, made some predictions about things we now call gravitational waves, and the bending of light, all sorts of cool stuff. And he immediately started taking his machinery, his new tool, and applying it to the universe. And what he found, quite to his surprise, was that the universe must be dynamic. The universe must be either expanding or contracting. It, that is the only option available to the universe. Its most natural state is to be either expanding or contracting. But every observation up until then, which was uh, 1920 or so, had told us that the universe at very large scales is static. That, yeah, you know, stars move around and nebula, you know, wiggle. Sometimes something blows up. It is static. The universe is here and the universe has always been here. He had no reason to suspect this line of thinking was wrong. So he had to introduce another character, another ingredient in the universe to prevent that expansion or contraction, something that he called the cosmological constant. And then a couple years later, Edwin Hubble found that galaxies are receding away from each other. And it turns out we do live in an expanding universe. And Einstein admitted that it was his greatest blunder because he had a chance. He had a chance to predict the expansion of the universe before we observed it, but he didn't. And now his name is nothing more than a historical footnote. Where are we going to go in the future? Are we, is this, is this ongoing saga of science, especially in regards to, to uh, astrophysics, where do we go now? Because we still have this pesky problem. We still have Newton's problem. What is, what exactly is gravity? What causes it? You know, we know how it behaves. Einstein agonized over it. Do you think within our lifetime, are we ever going to have a, an actual handle on gravity? That is such a wonderful question. It, it's a story I trace through the book of how there's periods of, okay, we figured it all out. We've solved all the major mysteries. We can coast for a while. And maybe there's some side niggling issues like exactly how far away is the nearest star or what's that weird spiral nebula that's filling up a good chunk of the sky. But we'll figure that out later. And then there's a new technology a new instrument, a new way of seeing the universe, a new understanding of physics. And within a decade, we go from hey, everything's pretty much all right to, oh my God, what is going on? I do not understand a single thing. This universe is, is befuddling. And then we grind through the observations and the data analysis and we face almost insurmountable challenges. And then we reach a certain plateau. We're like, okay, okay, we got it now. We got it. There's a few things we don't understand, but we seem to understand. And then a new technology opens up. We're like, oh my gosh, I thought, I thought we had figured this out already. And then a whole new vista is open. And so I feel like we're on the cusp. I feel like we're on the cusp of we've had, we, we understand a lot about the universe for sure. But there are some things that we really don't understand. And we're at a point where our theories and our models are so inadequate, where we have no idea what dark energy is, where we're having a really hard time combining gravity with the for fundamental forces of nature. I think it's going to take something surprising, an observation out of left field, either intentional where we're going to build a new atom smasher or we're going to build a new telescope or we're going to do a, a new kind of thing or something surprising. I feel like we're at that point in the history of science. So now it's time. It's only it's only a matter of waiting for the next Newton or Einstein to come out with a completely new idea, throw it out there based on observations. You know, for example, um, gravitational waves. We mm -hmm. see them now. We couldn't see them with instrumentation before this, but we see them now. So there will come yet another black swan event, if you will, in physics where somebody just comes along and comes up with an innovative idea that all of a sudden there it is, or at least we think so <laughs> for a while right. until people find problems with it. <laughs> but yep. um, so you're expecting that. Do you think um, 
Yeah, I don't know if it'll be some super genius that that touches the earth and graces humanity with their brilliance. It may just be the diligent hard work of dozens or hundreds of scientists over the course of a generation that does that unlocking because that's happened sort of like that's sort of like quantum theory yeah quantum theory had heisenberg and had schrodinger and hell yeah exactly Uh uh-huh where the uh, where the observations just force us to a conclusion over the course of a couple decades interesting do you see indications that this is sort of moving in that direction do you see people's work papers then things like that that are moving in that direction there's two things that we're starting to observe that are interesting. One is the failure of the Large Hadron Collider to see anything interesting at all. Mm-hmm. No new signs of any new particles. It found the Higgs boson. Good job for them. Nobel Prize. But that's but been we're basically kinda, it. Yeah. We that was it. Yeah. Uh, and the longer they go without seeing anything, the more and more hypothetical models get ruled out. Like whole categories of models are now disfavored from this simple non-experiment. So that's very interesting. That's got to lead to a shakeup in particle physics. And still no revelation about gravity. Still no revelation about gravity. We're starting to observe something interesting with the expansion of the universe where measurements taken of the very early universe with something we call the cosmic microwave background are in very slight tension with observations taken with the nearby universe from supernova there appears to be a tension there maybe the universe is trying to tell us something interesting we have dark matter detectors running round the clock hoping to catch a stray particle their non-detection is ruling out large swaths of what the dark matter could be, but there are still okay. some. Let me ask candidates. you this. Yeah, go ahead. WIMPs, okay, weakly interacting particles, mm-hmm. is, are they being ruled out? The simple, so WIMP is a class of particles. There's a few candidates that could act that way. And the simplest candidates, the, the easiest to reach candidates have been ruled out by their non-detection in the Large Hadron Collider. But there are still a few other characters that could fit that description. Also with like dark matter with, in regards to it, could our ideas about gravity be missing something? And it's not actually there, it's just gravity may interact with everything else in a way that we can't, we don't understand currently. So that there may be no dark matter. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Well, the challenge with that is that when you start monkeying around with general relativity, usually one of the first things to go is the fa- is the statement from general relativity that gravity propagates at the speed of light. That's a that's a prediction of general relativity itself and almost all and I almost want to say in all entirely all 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 modifications to general relativity end up breaking that where gravity travels at a different speed than light. But with the recent announcement or from a year ago of this neutron star merger, where we saw both the the flash, the bang, and we saw the gravitational wave ripple, those arrived at very nearly the same time. Essentially that ruled out that one observation ruled out almost all theories of modified gravity. Interesting. And also, it would imply that the propagation of anything, not just light, but anything through this universe, the upper limit is the speed of light. Yes. And we could still be getting gravity wrong. In fact, we probably do have gravity wrong. There probably is something beyond Einstein's theories, but it's not something we've thought of in the past 60 years. So this is why you say in your book, as a subtitle, understanding our big, messy existence, because it truly is messy. Super messy and super big. And the story of the past 400 years of astronomy is revealing just how big and messy this whole thing is. It's been messy since it started, but we can't do without it. Wouldn't astronomy live anywhere must, else. We must. Yes, wouldn't live anywhere else. That was a bit of material that went over the edge. A bonus clip from a full episode of Event Horizon. New episodes every Thursday.
so do be sure to hit subscribe. The full episode should be on your screen right about now.